Yo, what's up YouTube? How y'all doing? My name is Beaker and welcome to my channel. On today's YouTube video, we're going to be looking at the best ARs of Season 6. Now, if you guys have seen my videos on this stuff before, you know that, you know, I'm not just like, as soon as Season 6 launches, I don't just like go and make a list really, really fast. Like, I actually do a little bit of testing, but also, you know, checking true game data, uh, make sure everything just kind of lines up. Um, so, we're just going to jump straight on into it. We're going to jump into the number one, in my opinion, is still the AK-47. It's got the best TTKs um, at range and even up close as well, and it has amazing mobility. It is just obviously harder to control. I actually just had a super banger game uh, earlier today, that I, so you guys will actually see that later on in the week. Number two is still the XM4. As you guys know, it's probably my favorite AR. It's just a good go-to. has an extremely easy recoil pattern to get used to. Its TTKs are okay. They're not the best, but basically what makes the XM4 really, really good is that the upper hitbox is really, really big. Meaning, so the same multiplier that you get for the headshots, you also get for the next shots. So that's huge, right? Because you have even more room to hit headshots essentially and get that damage and just be able to melt people super fast um and then number three is actually going to be the qbz qbz is actually going to kind of surprise you we're going to jump over to true game data here in a little bit and check it out but this thing absolutely smacks like it it put out way more damage than what i was expecting it definitely puts out more than the krig and its recoil is pretty much on par with the old krig um they did kind of fix that weird visual recoil like bouncing down animation it, anyways they they got rid of that which is awesome i do think that that is once people realize like more and more that how good that gun is it's going to start to take over and like i said it's extremely easy to use and its ctk is really really, really good uh so let's go ahead and jump over to true game down and check it out all right so as i said in four we have number one cold war ak uh i put a few other guns in here as well i put in the c58 because i feel like it's a pretty popular gun and then also the farah and then we obviously have the QBZ and then the XM4. So obviously, like I said before, AK-47 is amazing up close and at long range as well. Um, the Fara, this actually surprised me. I didn't realize that at chest shots that there actually is no damage drop off. I did talk about this when in Season 5 Reloaded when it came out. Uh, they basically just changed all the modifiers to basically make it less forgiving, but it still had the same TTK, so it has a really good chest multiplier. So that's why there's no drop off. Number two, so like I said, the QBZ has really, really good range already. I mean, that's it's got the fastest TTKs um, from 38 all the way to 46. So honestly, that's a pretty big gap. Like there's a lot of gunfights where you're going to um, be in that area. And, and, you know, like I said, to beat out pretty much everything else, obviously I haven't compared it to like the MGD2 or the Stoner, but you're killing people pretty quickly. And then even after that, it's it's really really good uh so like i said you know after crunching the numbers i think more and more people are going to use the qbz um maybe not too too many because we'll kind of break down more later on but uh and then we have the c58 right after that and then the xm4 and then like i said with the Farah as well I'm going to go ahead and switch over to headshots which is where the xm4 is pretty much going to jump a lot of positions still the ak-47 is going to be one of the better ones c-58 doesn't have any damage drop off as long as you're hitting them in the head qbz is not as good as the xm4 or the cold war ak however it still has had that really really good range and a decent drop off and the far is kind of right there as well now where things completely change again as i talked about xm4 just having that same ttk in the neck as you do with the head which is just makes this thing so dominant and pretty much everything else is going to be the same after that because the uh neck shot multiplier is the same as the chest so pretty much all the stuff is going to look the same other than the fara because that did get a little bit of a uh, change in the multipliers for the neck and so where things are going to get a little bit different here uh, stomach pretty much all the same thing as well again fara they did add that drop off to make it less forgiving but when we go to extremities so you know when i when i make these lists usually the best is going to be a gun again it has fast ttk but it's also going to be for people that are really good at the game you need to have good recoil control in order to use it the better is going to be people like me where you know i'd say we're like not quite casual but definitely higher up than that 
Uh, not super, super sweaty and aggro, but definitely want to use meta weapons and stuff like that. That's where the XM4 comes in. Decent recoil pattern to get used to. And again, you definitely need to hit head and neck shots in order to make that thing work. Um, but then with the good rating that I have is generally, it's obviously has to have a good TTK, but overall what trumps it over everything else is going to be the control. Now, the QVC is extremely easy to control, but as we kind of saw with the Krig, it can't have good TTKs, easy to control recoil, and also be forgiving. So the problem with the Krig from back in the day is that when you started hitting extremity shots, it was still pretty decent as far as TTKs. As you can see with the QVZ, it's terrible. I mean, it, at this first damage drop-off, it's not too bad. You know, again, stretching out the range, but after these really long-range fights, like, I mean... At long range, it's going to be pretty tough to manage your recoil, and you're going to be hitting extremities like crazy. So that's kind of where it falls into, and I I still think it's really, really good. I do think a lot of people should be using this thing. Um, I've barely even seen this ground loot, so I, it's definitely going to take some time. Um, so, yep, that's what we're looking at now, and that's my ratings as far as true game data. Let's go ahead and hop over and see the build for all of these. So starting off with the number one weapon, in my opinion, is going to be the Cold War AK, and obviously we're going to build it with the Groove Suppressor, pretty standard stuff. The barrel, honestly, is, is kind of up in the air, again, with this thing being more aimed towards higher skilled players. Definitely get away with the Liberator barrel. Um, you know, you're not going to have that horizontal bounce help with this barrel as opposed to with the RPK. But the bullet velocity is pretty much the same, so as far as leading shots, they're both going to feel the same. Liberator, you just don't have the ADS penalty, which is actually really, really nice. I find myself using the RPK a little bit more, so we're going to go ahead and throw that on. Optic, pretty standard. We're going to have the Axe Alarms 3X Optic. I just run the standard 45 round mag just, be, just to make this thing a little bit lighter and more mobile and don't affect the ADS. And honestly, its fire rate really isn't that fast, so 45 rounds is definitely plenty. If you're trying to you know, maybe try and baby step into this thing, you are worried about having just 45 rounds, definitely run the 60, it's going to be just fine, it's just, just know that it's going to feel like some of the other ARs, be a little bit heavier, have a slower aimed outside speed, but like I said, for me, I was running the 45, and the underbarrel is pretty much a no-brainer, we're going to run the spets down script. All right, now with the XM4, this one is pretty standard, there's pretty much only one build to use for this, as long as you're playing in Verdansk, it's going to be the agency suppressor, task force barrel, Action Arms 3X Optic, 60 round mag, and then the Field Agent Grip. Now I say in Verdansk, but obviously this is actually a really good sniper support weapon. Again, especially if you're used to hitting more headshots, pretty mobile. Um, I would definitely just, I would, I would switch out the agency for just the standard suppressor, drop the barrel completely. Um, if you're good with iron sights, I would say put on the Tiger Team to get some mobility back. Um, if not, if you're like me, you want to be able to handle mid-range fights, I definitely just throw on the Microflex. I actually like the 45 round mag because honestly most of my SMGs are 45 to 50 rounds anyways so pretty used to that uh, and then I followed up with the field agent grip now if you're okay with the recoil and you know you kind of want some more mobility I would definitely swap out for the patrol grip as true game Dad talked about we're mainly sprinting um, as opposed to like the bruiser grip where it's just just basic movement speed so like uh, you know strafing walking everything like that is going to be affected with this grip but most of the time we're sprinting so patrol grip is usually the best one to get the best mobility boost you do actually get like a five percent boost with the patrol grip for sprinting movement speed the bruiser grip is three percent all the way around so actually a pretty noticeable difference i've been moving this with my smgs and actually do notice a difference but if you are looking to speed things up a little bit definitely use this uh and then we're gonna wrap it all up with just the raider pad to get some of that sprint to fire back so obviously this is an ar uh, but yeah that's a pretty good sniper support weapon and then also a really good sniper support weapon is going to be last but not least the qbz going to be running now on the range builder and be running the agency suppressor task force barrel action arms 3x optic six round mag uh and then the field agent grips are pretty standard and then just like with the xm4 if you want to use this thing as a sniper support weapon gonna run the regular suppressor no barrel you can throw on the tiger team if you'd like if you don't like uh, or if you're okay with iron sights me personally i always want a nice clean red dot when i'm engaging in those mid-range fights again throwing on the 45 round mag and then uh, I've been running just the field agent grip with the Raider stock, and this thing has amazing, amazing, amazing mobility. Uh, but you can definitely swap this out for, again, just run the patrol grip, and you'll be 
zoom in around the map for sure. Um, AK-47 is also an amazing cyber support gun as well. Definitely don't want to leave that out of this discussion, but I uh, just kind of forgot. And the, the build's pretty much the same. I would definitely advise to run the field agent grip as opposed to trying to swap out for the bruiser grip just because it does have a little bit more recoil. But me personally, I don't really use that as a sniper support weapon anymore because I like something that's a bit more fast firing because indoors it just makes it a little bit more forgiving. But anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up our entire Good, Better, Best Season 6 ARs. Make sure you drop a like and also subscribe to the channel. I definitely do appreciate it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, as far as what I missed, as I talked about in the very beginning, the meta is extremely, extremely open right now. So pretty much use whatever you're the most comfortable with and you're going to be just fine. But if you are looking to maybe switch things up or run, like I said, some of the better guns, these are the, these are my pick top threes. Thanks again, guys, for starting out at the very end. Definitely do appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one.